In 2018, I participated in my first ever game jam, the Global Game Jam. It was super fun, but also super stressful. And ever since then, I've been wanting to join another jam. Unfortunately, due to the lack of time, I wasn't able to join any other jam in 2018. Fast forward to 2019, and I really thought that I would participate in a Global Game Jam this year. But again, the lack of time was a problem, so I had to skip it. But on February 2019, the Brachis community hosted a game jam. And I thought, damn it, I'm, I'm not gonna have enough time. However, this was a one week week jam. See, most jams are usually during the weekend. You have 48 hours to work on a game, but I work on most weekends, so it's really hard for me to join a normal jam. But this one was a week-long jam, and for people who are in the same situation as me, this is amazing, because sometimes we can dedicate a whole weekend to work on a game. So I thought that maybe I could work during the day and jam for a few hours after dinner. Perfect! And at that time, I was also doing a bunch of Resident Evil 2 remake streams, so I thought, maybe I could stream it. And I did. It, it didn't go very well. So the jam started, and the theme was Love is Blind. Unfortunately, February 16th was a Saturday, and I could only start working on the game on the 19th. But until then, I could start thinking of some ideas. The problem was, I had none. Now, Love is Blind might bring some of you to think of happy things, maybe. But I wanted death, sadness, betrayal. I wanted the darkest side of Love is Blind. I had some ideas, but not enough for a game. Then a friend of mine, Fabio, who knew I was going to participate in the jam, gave me a neat idea for a game. The idea was you would play with the guy that would have to retrieve different items for different girls. The player couldn't reach any of these items. He would have to talk to a girl and by falling in love, platforms that would help him get to the item would appear. But by falling in love with another girl, those same platforms would disappear and others would appear instead. It was a cool idea and it could have done for really interesting levels, but I was struggling to make it dark. It sounded like a playboy hitting on a bunch of different girls. But the idea the idea of making platforms disappear was intriguing to me. So I grabbed the idea and decided to make something a bit different. A platformer where you would collect hearts, but by collecting those hearts, some platforms would disappear, thus making the game much more challenging. But the ending of the game would also be different depending on how many hearts you have collected. And I also wanted to add enemies, but at this point I wasn't quite sure how they would affect the game. It all depended on the amount of time I had. So this was basically my pitch to everyone on the first stream, and the feedback was positive, so I decided to go with it. We were making a platformer. So, on the first day I worked on a game, I just did the basics. To the best of my abilities. I made a very Minecrafty looking block as a placeholder for the ground, and I also made a very, very bad looking character during the stream. Then it was time to put it on the Unity engine. Let's just say things didn't go according to plan. Professional game developer here, everyone shut up! And then programming, which got unnecessarily sexual. Oh, get access, that's what I want. Yeah, raw, I want it raw. <laughs> it also didn't go according to plan. Definitely gonna work. Friend, for a guy that is working on a full-fledged platformer, this was a bit embarrassing. <laughs> I can't make platformers anymore? That's great. But at the same time, it was also kind of hilarious, so that's okay. <laughs> I'm stupid, I'm sorry. The point is, I fixed it. Eventually. Well, we have a platformer. It took us almost two hours to do this. <laughs> that day I also made an attack animation for our main character, but let's just ignore that. T ignore it. That's so bad. I also implemented a very bad coyote jump, but it worked. Sort of. As long as it works, it's fine. I also added an enemy so that the attack animation would add something to attack. But since I didn't have any art for the enemy, I just made the ground with a red tint. Again, it worked. That's what it matters. By the end of that stream, I had most of the main mechanics implemented. The character worked. I implemented the heart mechanic where a platform would disappear if you grabbed it. And the enemy could be killed with a melee attack. It was getting pretty late, so I decided to head off to bed. Lixie is sleeping. Lixie is going to sleep. 
the second day I worked on the game, I decided to do some work before I started the stream. I completely remade the character. Oh my god, that's so cute. And I also added all the animations I was going to need. Now, do you remember that friend that gave me the idea? This guy right here? Well, he also gave me a concept for an enemy. I didn't do any animations, but I did make the in-game version of it. And during the stream, I animated a very simple idle and walking animation. After I made the animation and after a few failed attempts to program the enemy, reach the target. Stop. I was able to make an enemy that would walk from side to side on a platform and it was also at this point that I started to question my ability to game dev. Maybe I was just tired. I, I started the stream very late and I was trying to make the enemy in a very unnecessarily complicated way and my friend was like, why don't you do this instead, you goddamn idiot. And I was like, bro, you're smart. This is, you know what, I've been working all day, I'm tired, my brain is working at 10% efficiency. <laughs> That's why I'm so stupid. <laughs> By the end of the second stream, we had the enemy implemented and a very rough camera movement and checkpoint system. Instead of having the camera following the player like a traditional platformer, the level would be divided in sections. And every time the player reached the far right of the level, the camera would move to the next section. And it kind of worked. The next day would be the last day to finish the game. Last day, I could only work on the game during the night and the gem ended at 8 a.m. on the 23rd, which means that I literally had one more night to work on the game. And just like the previous day, I decided to get some work done before the stream started. Firstly, I made some music and sound effects and I also worked on the tile set for the game. I was also prepared, or so I thought, to work on it the whole night. So the stream started and then problems began. The tile map system for Unity doesn't work that great, so I had to do extra work on my tile map. The stream crashed twice. Sorry, goddamn internet exploded yet again. The collider also made weird edges that I didn't need. What is this madness? But it was fine, it was fine, because now, since most of the main stuff was done, I could finally start working on my favorite part level design. However, in the middle of doing the best part of game making, for me at least, things started to go wrong. Remember when I said the camera and checkpoints were a bit rough? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> the checkpoint problem was quickly solved. However, the camera was much harder to fix. So much so that I actually thought of just having a normal camera following the player. I should just make the camera follow him. God damn it. But I really liked the way the camera worked, showing one section of the level at a time. And I'm also very stubborn, so I hammered on it until I actually fixed it. It wasn't easy at all, and like the enemy took a few different tries, but eventually, it worked. Yes, finally, Christ. So I decided to make two levels, five sections per level, and one final level where the horrible truth would be revealed. Now, if you haven't played the game yet, well, I'd really appreciate it if you would, but also I'm going to spoil the whole thing in the next few seconds, so the link is in the description. <coughs> Also, the link goes to an enhanced version of the game. Just keep that in mind. It will all make sense at the end of the video, I promise. Now go play it, please. So the theme was love is blind. And like I said, I wanted to grab the darkest side of that. So the whole plot was that you were a teenage boy in love with this terrible girl. And even though the game might look very happy and fun, in reality, you were actually going around the school hallway murdering everyone. I tried my best to implement the theme in a literal and figurative way. So the love was blind in a way that you didn't even know what you were doing. You were in love and everything had this colorful paint over it. You weren't blind as in you couldn't see, you just didn't see reality as it was supposed to. And love is blind as in the more love you had, the more hearts you collected, the less you saw. Quite literally, as platform forms would disappear, making the game more challenging. And by killing the Woofles, the adorable name we came up for the enemies, you were in a way proving your love. That was the whole plot and how it tied up with the theme. After doing all of this, I started implementing the music and the rotating heart pickups that my friend, remember my friend, that the one, the, the, yeah, that one, he made the rotating hearts as well. My bro gave me hearts. <laughs> And after making the level design of all the levels, including the last one, which was tweaked with some ideas from you guys on the stream, I started working on the main menu and cutscenes, which are basically just an image and text because it's a game jam. Now let's rewind a little bit. My friend, you remember my friend, that one? This guy? After the second stream, he made some fan art for the game, which looked incredible, and I asked him if he could make the portrait of the antagonist for the cutscenes, which he did, because he's awesome. So after I made a quick and terrible looking menu, it was time to work on the cutscenes. I completed the initial cutscene, the, the first cutscene that plays before the game actually starts, and after that I only had two hours left to submit the game. 
I was feeling great. I wanna die. <laughs> so I wanted three different endings. Bad idea for a jam. One, if you grabbed all the hearts and killed all the enemies, which was the worst ending. Two, if you didn't grab any hearts and left all enemies alive, which was the good ending. And the third one, which was the bad one, was everything in between. After so many problems, I thought this was going to be a nightmare to implement in just two hours. But to my surprise, it was a lot easier than I expected. <laughs> I made the dialogue for the different ending cutscenes, which was a lot of fun. How can I live? <laughs> This is serious. And I also decided that if you got the good ending, the menu art would change to that drawing that my friend made. After that, I made a couple of tests, realized I completely forgot about the sound effects, but at this point I had no time to implement it, so I built the game and I submitted it 12 minutes before the deadline. <laughs> the game was completed. It had a few issues though. Several issues actually. The game ended up not being too scary, or scary at all. The plot twist was the only thing scary about it. It was more of a look at what you've done type of scary, which in a way is what I wanted. The main goal was for you to start playing this game thinking it was going to be a horror game, then go all colorful and uplifting, and then smack you in the face with reality. The thing I wanted to implement was small jump scares or weird things happening during the game, which I had no time to do. The only thing where that happens is on the second level, where the music changes pitch and the sky turns more into a gray color instead of blue. Scary. The jump also didn't work properly, mostly because I implemented it wrong, and it had no sound effects whatsoever. But in the end, the game turned out kinda like I initially planned, and I think it fitted well with the theme. And it was also made under 24 hours. If we sum up all the hours from the streams, which were three and a half for the first stream, three and a half for the second, and about 10 hours for the third stream, I'm rounding up, plus one hour to make and animate the playable characters, three hours to make all the music and sound effects, and about one hour and a half to make the environment sprite sheet and that sums up to a grand total of 22 and a half hours and that is how I made a game in under 24 hours I didn't say it was a good game however not completely satisfied with the final result I decided to make a few tweaks to the game Firstly, I changed the jumping. From the comments on the gems page, the feedback for the game was actually very positive. But if there's one thing that people complained the most was that jumping was weird and it didn't work properly sometimes, which is a problem for a platformer. So I decided to start by fixing that first, then added the much needed sound effects. I added a screen shake every time you killed an enemy. I added a small fade to the platforms instead of instantly disappearing. I added one more level with five sections, which was more level design, so that was a lot of fun. And I also added two more endings. One, in case you finish the game without killing anyone but collecting all the hearts and one for killing everyone and not collecting any hearts which is probably the more interesting ending i also wanted a page that showed specifically which ending you got at the end of each run and i also added a page that showed all the endings you already unlocked more importantly i have a camera filter pack that i bought on the asset store like a year ago and i decided to add weird things it made the game a lot more interesting now that small weird stuff happens during the game. It really feels like reality is trying to break in as you're playing. I changed the end credits, tweaked the main menu and added a splash screen. And the game was finally completed. If you want to play the jam version, it is available on my itch.io page, but I do recommend sticking with this tweaked version. I could add more stuff, like more levels and endings, more enemies and mechanics, but to be honest, I just wanted to tweak the game and have the version I initially thought for the jam. And also, I gotta say thanks again to my friend Fabio for all the help he gave during the stream. I'll leave a link to his stuff in the description if you guys wanna check it out. Now, if you played the game and just didn't watch the whole video, what do you think of it? Please let me know in the comments. Feedback is always appreciated as I do wanna grow as a game developer and, you know, maybe not look so stupid during a stream again. This jam was a lot of fun thanks everyone at the Brax community for hosting it. I can't promise that I'll do a lot more videos, to be honest, but as always, I will do my best. Hopefully the next one will be the Resident Evil 2 video remake everyone has been asking me to do. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.